This is my kid's 1987 Mazda RX-7. He picked up this car in a bunch of boxes with parts everywhere. It barely made it to our house on a trailer. He spent a solid year working on the car and finally got it to run, kind of. It would start and it would run, but the likelihood of it staying running was a little bit low and the likelihood of it starting again was very low. That's how it was when Bryson left. Bryson's gone for two years. He's serving a church mission. This is a volunteer situation where he funds his own way to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ to people in another area. The game I'm playing now is to see what I can do to this car to spruce it up a bit so that he has something pretty nice when he gets back. I have to admit, I'm having just a little bit too much fun with this car. Whoa! <laughs> Full on broke loose on the back end right there. Okay, I did not see that coming. Holy smokes! <laughs> I installed a turbo controller on this car and as part of that installation I learned for the first time how much pressure is being generated by the turbo. It seems to be pushing at peak about 13 pounds which for a piston guy is scary high. Uh, in a rotary context I still think that that's a little high and it gives me some concern about whether the engine is running lean. So the next little gizmo that I need to put on here is an AFR gauge. I found a gauge that I really kind of like. It adds a few things that are also interesting to monitor from within the car, specifically fuel pressure. This car still has an issue where I have to disable the fuel pump to get it to start on some occasions after it's hot. I don't know exactly why that is. I have new fuel injectors in it. They are low impedance as should be on this car. I've done a compression check and the rear housing is stellar. The front, maybe not as much, but, but seemingly sufficient to be able to start. So I don't know exactly what's going on there. That may get better with mileage, um, hard to say for sure. In any event, being able to monitor the fuel pressure from within the car I felt might be helpful as I'm dealing with that issue. So this gauge has fuel pressure sensor. It also has two other sensors that, while not necessarily something I would go out and look for, when I found it, I thought it might be kind of cool. It has a fuel temperature and it has an ethanol percentage. I thought quite a bit about where to put it. If I were building a track car, I would want my boost gauge and my AFR particularly to be front and center. And so I would mount them perhaps on the A pillar, maybe up on the dash. But in this context, what I really want is the information to be available without having it flashing in my eyeballs all the time. So I printed a new radio bezel that slides the turbo controller over just a little bit, slides the radio up just a little bit, and makes room for a standard 52 millimeter gauge pod. What I need to do now is lift the car up, pull the exhaust apart, cut a hole, and weld the bung onto the exhaust so that I can install the O2 sensor and plug that in. Well, I'm kind of excited to see what kind of air fuel ratio we're getting, especially when I'm peaking at 13 pounds of boost. So, let's go for a ride. Well, it seems my concern about running lean is so far quite unfounded. Um, to the contrary, we're actually running quite rich. We'll see how that changes at higher RPM in a minute after the engine warms up. original stock power antenna. The thing was just bulky and ugly and it wasn't working. And while a guy could put a little time and effort into fixing it, I didn't want it there in the first place. So I put this one on instead. It's so much cleaner, so much more elegant. It folds down if I want it to, but it's hardly noticeable compared to that other thing. That's a solid one horsepower right there. 
For about two horsepower, I installed a rear view mirror with a camera, both a dash cam facing out front and a backup camera facing out the rear. Not only does this gain me about two horsepower, but I also get some significant safety advantages out of this. Now every time you put it in reverse, you can see for sure everything that's going on behind you, which in this particular car where it sits so low and the visibility is not bad, but not great, it makes a huge difference in confidence when you're backing up the car. Speaking of which, in the process, I learned that when I would put it into reverse, the backup camera wouldn't always come on and I couldn't figure out why. Well, I was watching one of my old videos and noticed that the backup lights on the car don't always come on immediately either. That led me to the reverse sensor under the car and sure enough, that thing was a little bit finicky. I took it apart, cleaned it up. A new one's like 200 bucks. So, you know, if a guy's got to, he can go there. But after cleaning this one up, it seems to be working just fine. So I'm happy with that now. This mirror is crazy cool. Not only does it record everything that's going on while you're driving, but it also has a sensor in it such that if the car gets bumped while it's not turned on, it will turn itself on and begin to record what's going on around the car out of both cameras for some predetermined amount of time. So while that doesn't capture the incident itself, it captures everything that happens right after some kind of a bump incident. So imagine parking at the grocery store, having a car bump into you and then drive away, you get footage. Pretty cool, I like it. For about a half a horsepower, I had to rebuild the passenger seat bracket. The seat just sits too high on the passenger side. It's enough that, that you have to kind of kink your neck to sit in it very well. So I did two things to fix that. Number one, I, I rebuilt the bracket itself so that the whole seat sits about an inch lower. Not only does that make it so that the passenger fits better in the car, but it also makes it so that the seat can fold forward without hitting the ceiling of the car. The second thing is that Corbo offers a shaved seat base that drops the base of the seat another inch. So I had them take the seat back and shave the base and now the, the, the feel for the passenger in the car is completely, completely different. It, it actually feels comfortable to sit in it as a passenger, whereas before, having your head jammed up against the ceiling was completely uncomfortable. As a potentially controversial play, for a solid 19 horsepower, I installed an amplifier and a subwoofer in the back of the car. As a practical matter, the car has very little cargo space to begin with. So consuming what little space you have with a giant subwoofer in the back of the car may not be well played. But you know what? <laughs> it's pretty fun. <laughs> So we'll see. I, it has some nice bump to it and it just adds to the fun factor, right? It's mounted in there with a couple of screws that can be pulled out easily enough so it's not a big deal. The fun factor is really high.